All right, so I think this will be a good time to go ahead and get started. So I'm just gonna talk real briefly about what we did over in the um, previous previous episode and what we're going to try and go over today. So yesterday we talked about getting stuff started, you know, where to pull in inspiration, using different methods to get you started. Today's episode will be a little bit less instructional. Now I don't want to use the word instructional. Today will be a little bit less. Um, information heavy and a lot more doing um, but we will talk about two to three subjects that I think are very important today um, so uh, one of our one of my members that likes to um, chat in here shot aces on the forum side left a message about potentially doing it a 4v4 map so that you could see how um, to approach the idea of the difficulty with doing a good looking 4v4 map. And I want to discuss that a little bit in, uh, also. So first, so we're gonna discuss that. Uh, and it also ties into flexibility, being flexible about your design and stuff like that. So what I'll do is I'm gonna start with flexibility first and kind of like a, a basic concept that I like to uh, talk about when it comes to flexibility of design. So one thing that happens a lot, especially as you know, an artist or anything like that, you kind of get really attached to your work. So like I did all this here, you know, in the last episode where, you know, I went over some basic ideas that I wanted to design. I even came up with, you know, a basic top down view and a little photo and I've done all this work already. And then, you know, one thing to keep in mind is it is really easy to get attached and blindsided by any sort of work that you put into your map. So for example, would be, I really like this. And if I wanted to go to a 44 map like Shot Aces has uh, suggested, I would either have to build upon this or completely scrap. I would also have to probably rethink a lot of this too. Flexibility has two things that go well with it. Being flexible will help you always make sure that the map becomes the best what it can be. But there is a downside. If you're too flexible, sometimes the map changes so much that it never gets finished. So you need to be open enough to ideas and potentially changing things enough that you might come up with something better and not get addicted or attached to what you have, but also stern enough that you don't just keep changing the same thing over and over and over and you never finish thing. When you're somebody who's new to level design, I think it's better to err on the side of finishing something because the experience of making something is going to be a lot more beneficial to you than reiterations through the flexibility of being willing to change things around a lot um but that's when you're new as you get more maps done you can become a lot more flexible and reiterate on your design a lot more so that's going to bring me into this other little thing that i wanted to talk about which is our first halo related subject. Um, and that is the limitations of which Forge put on you and how to plan around that. So what I'm gonna do is close, these, close this one down real quick and close this one down. <coughs> um, let me open up a new notepad. All right, 36, that should be readable. Actually, let's go a little bit bigger. Let's go to 48. <laughs> so if you're in here, you're probably a forger because I'm, I've, for this season one, I guess, intro, I've promoted this only to people in the forge community for the most part. So we're going to talk about some general ideas that I use when it comes to deciding what type of player counts and art 
and the the balance of and balance of of those so there's one thing for me personally i tend to prefer 2v2 and 1v1 player accounts there's for a few specific reasons i think halo 5 is a little bit too of a, much of a mess when it comes to its general gameplay when you have this might seem a little bit weird, but this is just me spitballing ideas. For me personally, when a game gets a little bit faster in these like arena shooters, I prefer the smaller player counts because things get too hectic and there's no way to control how the teams are interacting with each other with the bigger 4v, uh, 4v4 counts, you know, without making the map ginormous. So, but at the same time as a designer, especially somebody who has been doing it for a long time, I really appreciate the, the blend of art and gameplay together as one thing. A lot of people look at, you know, Forge as, okay, I'm making a Forge map. I either, I either have to do gameplay or art. I can't do both. You know, people are like, I can do Forge. I can make a map that's super well, plays well, but it won't look good because the map is designed around 4v4 or 8v8 and it's big. Or they say, well, because you've made a map that looks pretty, you didn't care about art. That's a common misconception inside of Forge. Um, you can indeed do both, but there is a slight limitation. If you're somebody who's extremely artistic, um, artistic, <laughs> artistic um i would say uh stick to 2v2 1v1s maybe 4v4 if you're somebody who's like who really loves the maps to look really pretty these offer you the most flexibility 1v1 and 2v2s offer the most flexibility all right Reason is, is due to scale. Uh, in these 1v1, 2v2 maps, you can scale the map much smaller, which means allows you to cram a lot more objects for detail. But that's only for people who want to be more original in their art. You know, maybe you're wanting to do like a, a high fantasy with like castles and swooping terrain and caves and, or let's say something hellish, you know, like a underworld, demon castle or lair of sorts you know stuff that is like extremely far outside of the halo art style if you do 1v1 and 2v2 maps it's actually quite easy to make a very convincing setting inside a forge where it gets a little bit pr trickier is when you move up to the 4v4 you have a lot more space that you have to incorporate into the map this is why often the good looking 4v4 maps are usually Halo themed. They're UNSC, they're Forerunner, they're Covenant, you know, things like that. And the reason for that is there's a lot more pieces inside of Forge that favor that. Um, so generally speaking, the 1v1, 2v2 people will uh, lean towards, towards original art, where 4v4 and, I mean, 8v8, you, it's really difficult to do original art, uh, will stick to um, Halo art. And that's just due to the pieces inside of Forge. That ha I mean, if you want to make something that is truly good looking and you want no expenses spared this is a good rule here now i was asked by somebody could i do a 4v4 map and what type of limitations will i run into um with you know art and it just depends on what i might what would i do art wise so the question would be if i switch to a 4v4 map 
Uh, could I do a Japanese map? Do Jap, uh, Jap map. And the thing is, is probably, um, one of the things is, let me pull up paint here real quick. Uh, paint. So one of the things about, or at least some of the photos that I've been looking at, and what I'll do is I'll pull up ArtStation again, and we'll actually look at some art. Um, since I, I've want to do a Japanese map, I've always wanted to do a Japanese map, so I would have to figure out, could I do things at the scale of a 44, or should I do a 2v2 map and then just build upon it? You know, find a central idea for 2v2 that covers a good play range and then add things onto it that will allow me to extend that range out potentially to 4v4. I will probably go that way because I really want to do a Japanese map more than anything else. But let's talk about a few ideas real quick. Uh, all right, sweet. So some of the pictures I've been looking at has these angled walls, you know? They have sloping walls, right? But they, they slope in all directions. So, you know, you have, this is from a top down. So the walls would be sloping down like this, you know? Kind of like a pyramid. And here's the thing about something like this. Um, hey, what's up, examples? Uh, right now, <coughs> welcome. These corners, whoops, where's my art cursor? These uh, corners right here take three pieces, th two to three pieces to make it turn. And on a 4v4 map, that might be doable, but I would have to sacrifice some detail in other spots. So we'll definitely explore the idea in the design phase of potentially doing 4v4. So I'll remain, that's where it goes back to that thing I was talking about before, being a little bit more flexible. Even though I really want to do a Japanese map, you know, I want this series to be interactive, you know. And if somebody suggests, hey, try this, you know, I would definitely like to talk about it and explain what I can think of on why I would or not do something. So the big question is, is do I think I could do a Japanese style map as a 4v4? And that's kind of hard to say. I'm not 100% certain, but it might be worth trying just to see just to see how the struggle would happen because it would be a struggle. I, I definitely think, especially for somebody like me who refuses to lose out on gameplay and lose out on art. I because to me the co the cohesive experience of both having excellent gameplay and excellent art is unmatched. You know, you, <coughs> if you can have both, shoot for both. And with Halo, it is a little bit more trickier, but we might actually explore that idea. But for now, I would like to keep doing this based upon it being a 2v2 map uh, at the moment. Um, so this is the stuff that we covered yesterday. We just, or not yesterday, sorry, uh, two weeks ago. We, I came up with this idea. I went through the examples that I did before. It's like a Japanese map. I want it to be a mountain-based thing, catwalks, buildings, natural terrain. Uh, 2v2, maybe, let's add, because this is a good point I actually want to bring up that it just came up. The point of writing things down like this here is so that you can actually potentially explore different ideas as they come across you, you know? And once you make something like this, it doesn't mean you can't go back and change it. Do not be afraid to be flexible and go back and change something. It's, it's best that you actually do. So 2v2, 4v4 map, damnation, somewhat inspired, um, because of this one art photo I found, let me pull that back up, actually. Let me close this. Uh, potential layout. <coughs> so we have this here. Uh, we have this little bridge here that 
um that's kind of like really high up and it sees down on both sides which kind of imitates a little bit of a damnation feel um feel so i fleshed this out a little bit uh basically i was like okay i need this because of the way that bridge was positioned i wanted this central building that can be easily traversed throughout the map and but I want to make sure, because it's in the middle of the map, that it's not just some bunker that teams can hold. So I have to make sure that it's not an absolute power position of the map. Also, I had the idea of putting window. we're going to put windows in it. And we're going to do this all in 3D today, actually. So we will actually be taking stuff that we wrote, down, wrote out and put it into actual something. So I was like, central area, power position, but make sure it's not super powerful. Uh, Corner area that has this rooftop to get to the opposite corner. It's wait, corner area that has a rooftop that you can get on opposite of the catwalk. I was I said I wasn't gonna do anything outside of the stream, no pre-planning, but I had a random idea that popped up and um I wanna write this down. Maybe use door a uh, big door door as a ledge to overpower um overpower bridge and center room and let me pull up this photo again so i can uh talk about it so i probably should be opening this in paint actually but i'll digress um, there's this door here, right here, where you're on this natural train, you swoop around, and you come through this big door. Originally, I had this idea of terrain coming up this way and then going onto this back roof like this. What I'm thinking of doing is this train will wrap up still, but you'll actually go onto this bridge, and it'll have a little window that looks into this middle building, and then you can maybe see down the bridge here. And you can still jump from here to over here so that you can fight this way. And we'll cover those ideas a little bit more later, but make sure spawn. So I wrote all this down last episode. Let's actually start doing something instead of just talking randomly and out my ass. Uh, I probably shouldn't do that for YouTube reasons, whatever. Um, all right. I also mentioned yesterday, or not yes, I keep saying yesterday, last video of why I think it's important to if you want to take level design a little bit more seriously to get familiar with the 3d program and it's because of speed but it also it's just good practice when you go into a professional world you know you can do some really crazy ideas really quick um inside of here again as i said before this is not going to be a tutorial on how to use sketchup there's a million of them out there. They're all really good. This program is super, super, super easy to learn. But since we're making a Halo map, one thing I know is Halo uses feet, right? So I loaded, when in the beginning, I loaded this as um, in inches or feet. So I can actually type in numbers and get things roughly scaled to how I know they are in... Um, inside of Halo. So what I'm gonna do is actually start with this center bridge. Since since it was mentioned that this was a damnation inspired map, that's where I'm gonna start. And we'll just go 60, oops. So let's go ahead and build that first bridge. And I'll talk about some random things that might come up as I, as design hurdles come up and as I think about them, I'll definitely mention them. You know, I'm not going to just, I'm going to speak the entire time as I'm doing this. Come on, say ink point. Thank you. All right. Um, let's make this. Okay. This is actually the first thing. So this bridge here that I'm making here, I know because I've played a lot of Halo and as a designer, I think it's very important that you understand how the game that you're designing for functions on a very deep level. 
so for me personally, I know the max jump height of a Spartan with all its tricks. Well, there's one trick that can get you a little bit higher, but it's super inconsistent. But I know if the max height Spartan can jump is 21 feet with spring or with a slide boost jumping hover craziness. So 22 feet uh, is if you want something to not be reached, it needs to be at least 22 feet. So what I'm going to do is make this 24 feet. And this is just to make sure that when somebody's on this bridge, they're, they can't just drop down and jump back up, drop down, jump back up. Um, right now, this is 16 feet wide. It probably is too wide, but for now, this will be fine. So there's that first bridge. And I want this to be another 32 feet long. That looks good to me. 24 feet, how about that? How about that? Yeah, 24, yeah, that's, yeah, 24 feet is, when I want something that's up high and unreachable by ground floor, that's about the number I go for. It's a, it's a bit strong in terms of the angles. So with this being 16 foot wide, I'll probably have to make it a bit narrower, uh, more narrow so that you can't hide. Like, actually, I probably should create a, a little, actually, you know what, that's what I'm gonna do. Um, Let's go eight feet. Uh, let's do this two feet. Uh, eight. Uh, let's push the. I don't know why I said two feet, but let's go one foot and another one foot. This will be my fake Spartan. This will be my little Spartan. And uh, oh, wait, I forgot how to box select in this game. Uh, oh, okay in this game, in this editor. <laughs> We're gonna make that into a group. So, eight feet. Spartan is about eight feet, more or less. I mean, give or take. So, this will give us a good idea of scale. <clears throat> and as I have that up there, this is a bit wide. Like, like one of the things I'm scared of would be scared of the most is somebody standing here and you being down here and not being able to see them. So what could do is push this back another two feet. Well, for some, that's something that you could do in Forge as like fine tuning. So yeah, last, uh, the last episode I did was a lot more informational based, where this one's going to be a lot more actually using that information that we talked about. And that's probably how every... That's probably how this series is going to go completely, is I'll have an episode talking about methods and ideas that we're going to be exploring in the very next episode, or the ones that I'm going to be actually using in the very next episode. So I want this to turn, um, it's an L-shaped bridge to kind of give it a little bit different flavor. So, and uh, let's go with 32 feet. So that's my high bridge. And this was, when I bring up, let me see if I can find that photo because I got a new hard drive and it's, I'm in the process of moving stuff around but there's this bridge right here or this wall that i saw um yeah i mean i round i always round up because i like rounding up it's just like a personal thing that i do they're like seven feet like four or six inches i think or something like that i uh, the exactness is more or less I guess the better way, the reason why I use eight feet is when you take a forge object and place them side by side, it's about eight feet, you know, give or take a little bit. So I say eight feet when I know in reality it's not, but according to the forge objects, which we know are not accurate whatsoever, I use eight feet as like a scale thing, but... But yeah, I saw this wall and I was like, okay, this wall here, this curving wall would be really cool if you could play on it and go into these two buildings. These, 
I like this whole like layout right here and I wanted to build on that. So that's what I'm making right now is this wall here. <coughs> so, and what, it, according, now I, I have my top down that I did completely memorize. Um, um, but if you guys want me to switch back and forth between my top down and this so that you can see where I'm going, I can, but for the most part, I have it completely memorized. Um, just let me know. So, and again, this SketchUp is supposed to be very generic. It's a rough scale. It's not supposed to be um, exact scale or anything like that. It's, you know, <laughs> just rough ideas. So that's my door, 16 feet. Oh, or is this 32? Yeah, no, that's 16. Again, I just use rough estimates. All this stuff you can definitely modify once you're in Forge. And as I see gameplay issues arise, I'll definitely bring them up and talk about them as I'm doing these layouts because they will definitely come up. Um, this is going to be that little stair set, but let me do something else first. Let me get <coughs> this little building over here. This is 16. Let's do another 16 there. And actually, no, let's, I want this building. So there's going to be a building here and a building over here. And I want this one to be bigger. So, <coughs> I, because, because I wanted the middle building to be traversable, as I was talking about in these notes here, like I want to use the central building as a place to traverse and look into and all this other stuff. I feel like it needs to be a little bit more, a little bigger so that it can accommodate for my player account. Um, granted, if I switch my player accounts, the scale of this room will change also. But, you know, we'll worry about this when we get into actual Forge, if we can actually accomplish this. Right now, I need to nail down a layout idea from this here and my top down that I drew. So, yeah, I'm going to make this middle building a little bit bigger. So, uh, I know this is eight feet there. I know this is 32 feet and then I want another let's try 16 and 16. as like a oh it seems like a pretty big line so what's the length of this now this is 64 feet seems good to me 64 is actually pretty large in halo well it's actually it's not but at the same time it is as like a, a small standalone room, this should be pretty, plenty big enough. And then I also want this to be 32 feet over this area here. And we want a little doorway here. So there's a little door there. <coughs> now, I think on this low terrain side when you're looking up to the high ledge because with damnation there's the bridge then there's the the pit side or the waterfall side or the overshield side a lot of people call it a lot of different things and then you have the shotgun side so when it comes to the higher bridge on damnation usually there's a, an, an extreme low side and an extreme high side i'm gonna let this in this part over here be like a middle courtyard that people can fight across from what I plan on is having, if you remember from the SketchUp, I had a building on this side over here that was mostly just like a cubby and maybe like a little awning roof that you can walk on. So there's going to be a courtyard here that we can fight through. So now one of the things when I was talking about the width of this bridge gameplay wise, it being this wide, 
it could be pretty easy for somebody to camp on this edge here and hide from somebody down here. So when we get into forge, this is something that you need to keep in mind if you don't want this bridge to be too powerful. Um, so with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and make this another 32 feet. And I think that will be my ground floor. So if that's 32 feet and I wanted this to be an L stair, so we'll go 16, you know, something like that. Uh, doom. Oops, there we go. And I'm a clean freak with my lines, so. <laughs> Oops, no, I need those. <coughs> We'll clean up later. Uh, the problem I have with damnation is that it has a very prominent power position, but the only way to get, but only one way to go. Yeah, that's something that we will actually, um, if you remember, let me go back to this here. So that was one thing that we actually talked about in the last episode was that this bridge can be quite powerful. And there's some things that I did on this top down to kind of approach that problem. So uh, it has a teleporter too. It does. Um, basically, we have this central building that has full access to the bridge. It's really easy to get to from all parts of the map. We also have this tower over here, again, that goes to the other, other, other end of the bridge. But I wanted something a little bit more counter. So what we're going to do now is we're going to have this natural terrain that comes up to this high side on the opposite corner that can actually peer down into a relatively powerful position over the bridge and use the middle building as a pseudo line of sight blocker that you can kind of teleport or not teleport around but strafe around so you know if you have a building blocking the line of sight you can strafe around the building to kind of have it as a way to like dance with the bridge so it's not as powerful but then i kind of came up with this idea of this middle doorway which was going to just completely block off i want to make it where this terrain can actually jump onto this doorway and see all the way down this bridge here so we're definitely going to pay attention to um that bridge uh more so than what typical damnation is it's not good this bridge will actually not be the highest point on the map. It will be the most flexible point on the map. That fact that it can see both courtyards, the courtyard that we will have uh, over here. And then the courtyard that we will have over here, it will be able to see both of those, but it won't be the highest spot on the map. And the bridge will also connect to two points that are very safe. Uh, the problem, uh, it has a tele the teleporters are super dangerous to go through. They can be, um, teleporter, I've used a lot of teleporters in the past, personally. Uh, I think for this particular one, I don't want to, but I am not opposed to it. Actually, uh, my OCD kicks in and I want to clean up stuff. <laughs> Uh, excuse me so but excellent point to bring up excellent point and it's something we will for sure pay a lot of attention to um how long was this again this ramp here is 24 okay sweet uh 24 feet and then we want to, and the exact angles of this ramp is subject to change and all that stuff. Okay, so here's our outside ramp, the bridge. Uh, let's go ahead and just pull out a part of this courtyard. Uh, I hate it when it turns white. No! Uh, I forget how to color things sometimes, paint material default edit select materials oh colors thank you white should be right there for now we'll keep things white 
um they are but they can be uh that can be addressed depending on how the total portal line works do you feel like people will want to push off the top left of the top down that is something that i had a concern with I believe that because it has such a narrow line of sight, because the way I had planned on doing it is that it's going to be slightly angled towards the rest of the map. And we'll, we'll cover that when we get to that corner today for sure. And remind, if, if, if I get to that, remind me again to talk about it. But yes, I was concerned about that. And that's why I wanted to go with the idea of the natural terrain ramp going to the doorway instead so that it it was only a power position counter to a very exact spot. But that's it. So I might move how that terrain connects to the back corner to the door instead. Let me pull up the, uh, the top down. So instead of the terrain coming up and wrapping around and then being able to access this rooftop here, what I'll probably do is the train will come up, allow you to get to this door, which will allow you to see down, or you can jump over to this. And the way the roof will be angled is you'll never be able to be on that rooftop safe because you're, you will always be visible. And I think if somebody was camping back here from what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to, there's this doorway here that's really safe to look to that corner here. There will be this door right here that can see all the way to that back corner. I'm also going to add a small window. Um, here, let me pull this up. I have this little awning thing here. I'm actually going to have it wrap around, and it's, there's going to be a little window on the wall that allows you to see to this back idea. So for sure, we're going to uh, have ways that while it – this actually goes back to one of the things I was talking about here on the last episode with After Hours where I use this idea of checks and balances. And let's go ahead and write that. Still try to use checks and balances. Um, for most part, I love this concept here, checks and balances. So anytime there is a high position, I'm definitely gonna put a very specific use case line of sight that is accessible from the weakest position so that you can at least see that area safely and punish people that are just straight camping there. So there will always, I tend to always try to design maps to have this kind of chess, or I, I should probably say checkers, not no chess, you know, where you move here, I can go here. If you move there, I, I can go here. And th so there's, I always like to try and design around these little check, check, you're in check, you're in check. And then maybe the opponent can be like, okay, he's playing chess or he's playing chess with me. If I go here, he's going to go here. So what I'm going to do is next level him and go to a different spot that completely counters the spot that I think he's going to go to, the counter spot that he thinks I'm going to go to. So I always try to design with this idea in mind. So I do think this this outside ramp to will be quite powerful to check people hiding potentially in that corner. But who knows? It definitely is something I have to pay attention to. I might add an exterior route to this uh, tower over here, maybe like as a jump up, like a, a rock jump, so that you can get in the tower safely and then use the tower as a way to counter that position. But excellent point to bring up. Excellent, excellent. But let me go ahead and uh, do what I was thinking here. So uh, 16 feet. So let me go ahead and start this little exterior building here. Uh, I think I want it <coughs> 16 feet. Um, actually, no. Actually, yeah. Let's let's do it for 16 feet right now. And no, let's do another eight feet. Let's get this a little bit higher up. Actually. It's a sketch up. Why am I carrying its exact height that's this much? Let's just use this uh, endpoint here. <coughs> um, let's go ahead and pull this out. We'll, we'll use 16 feet again. And what I want to do, what I did, one thing that I, I think 
I want is to have another window right here so that let's say they're camping at this corner over here. And let me uh, come to this little thing here. Let's say they're camping at this corner up high. I want somebody maybe to potentially come around this corner and there's gonna be just a small slit through this wall that hopefully the plan is you would be able to um, stand here, look through a little window and up through that corner. But more importantly, I want you to be able to see it from this corner so that you can use you can use this line here as a way to strafe through that window because that whole backside is gonna be no cover whatsoever. It's gonna be the high position so that you can push people off of this high bridge, but you have nowhere to go other than down, down to the courtyard. So hopefully this window idea will allow me to push people off of that entire back ledge if people are camping back there. And let's, you know, it was an awning inside of the, uh, the photo. So we're going to just make a little awning. <clears throat> and let's go ahead and make a window. Um, also, one of the cool things is if you get up here, you could fight through the window to the courtyard. You know, maybe, maybe you're having somebody camp in this corner here. Maybe, well, if they're camping in this corner here, you're just, you get free access to this building here and you can just come out to the bridge and just kind of poop on them, however you see fit. So I'm not worried about that actually. Let's put a window. Let's put some guidelines and let's, let's do one here, one here. I don't feel like doing the math. Now, the, th the dangerous thing about, the, well, actually, no, because how thick this, well, it's 16 feet now, but with how thick this is, nobody will be able to stand in this courtyard, look through this window, and see the grass. So this spot here isn't, this window is actually one directional. I don't know if someone else does this, but I always try to put two or three skill jumps in my map to create skill gap. Uh, I love skill jumps. Um, I could load up Halo and show you some of the ones that are on Hazard that was in matchmaking that nobody knows about. Um, and I also have a ton of them in um, After Hours too. So uh, I love skill jumps. Anything that you can create a skill gap with, I, I totally love. Um, that's also another reason why I said I when I make my maps, I try to have this idea of chess. So if somebody's here, where can I go to my map to counter that position? So you get to stress people's uh, technical skill with jumps you get to test their mental skill and well your aiming skill is always tested so that doesn't matter uh, if you wanted to design a map to like really stress aiming skill and movement skill you can make things a little bit narrower and a little bit taller and a lot of different varying like catwalks probably like a catwalk map where maybe there's a bunch of teleporters like maybe like a big square room with a bunch of teleporter bridges and you can go from bridge to bridge and really just like constantly be cranking your arm, but maybe make the bridges at an angle so that people, you have to use, you know, this weird 45 degree aimer. So you could, you could, you could definitely do stuff this stress um, aiming skill, but for the most part, Halo 5's aiming is kind of relatively dumb and easy anyway. So I wouldn't really worry about that. I would worry about mental, phys you know, uh, movement, stuff like that. Me personally. So yeah. Yeah, so I think this window will be one directional, which is kind of cool because I don't want this middle platform to poop on the courtyard because what I want is if somebody's on this bridge and I have a better shot and I punish them to drop, I don't want them to drop into a position that they'll literally just get a new advantage over me. So this will still hopefully be a punish when they drop off so that I as a player can either go to this. Oh, actually, let's go ahead and make that now. Um, four feet. I can... Ooh. I can go to this little cubby or go into this building from here. Cause this will be a one way to get into the building. I don't know how long I'm gonna go for also. Um, 
especially because today's is more about doing a lot of work and less talking. Um, and if I do go for a long time today, what I could do for YouTube is just like split the video into two parts. Um, I'm trying to be mindful and not go over two hours, but like, who cares? You know, like if people are in here, people are talking, um, asking questions. I mean, I'll go for all day for all I care or all night. Uh, and it would just be a really long YouTube video. <laughs> cool. We have this little awning here, a window. Also one idea that I wrote about, it's always good to check your notes is, um, let's see, a window from low roof that looks into the building and can see it all. So I wanted people to be able to get on top of this little awning and I was exper wanted to experiment with the idea that this awning would be able to see inside of the building. Now the thing about windows is windows can be, you might make a window that accidentally gives strength to the wrong part, if that makes sense. So if I put a window here, and I'm going to, but just, you know, um, as something to talk about in terms of design with windows, when you try to use a window as a way to like depower something. Um, remember, windows can be used both ways. So if you put a window in to try and weaken the strength of something, you could also accidentally be giving strength to that same thing that you're trying to weaken. And I'll give an example once I delete this face. So, okay. I stand here, I can look into the window, I can see the entire building, awesome. What is keeping somebody, like for, especially with this window, if I can zoom in, now being able to go to the window and see the entire courtyard that's out there. So this brings strength, this is a two-way window. Gotta keep those in mind. Um, so with how wide and narrow your windows are and the sizes of your windows will greatly change how strong something is. Sometimes a narrow window is good because it limits the line of sights. But at the same time, a narrow window is really abusable because you can peek, or, or peek around the edges back and forth. Um, a wide window just means that if you're in there, I can see you the entire time. Um, but at the same thing, they can see you the entire time also. So this is something that you have to adjust live as you're playing the maps. But I want a window here for sure. And I don't want it to be a narrow one, narrow one but I don't want it to be this wide either. So I'm going to keep it this wide for now as we go through the map. But this, is, this window here is not... A safe window to be placing and I wanted to point that out this window is very dangerous uh, whereas as I was speaking about earlier this window is one way it's only good for this spot here to see into the courtyard and that's it this can't see down into the other courtyard I mean I might be able to jump and get a random angle and maybe snipe through it if I have a sniper and that's a really hard shot and if you get that more power to you I love that but in terms of being able to stand here and just peer over the edge and just punish safely you won't be able to do that so I need to make sure to just make sure to come back to this window and make sure that it's very um balance more balance side question while you're working on this do you prefer making tall maps or long maps I'm trying to think of all the maps that I've done and I tend personally to stick to something that is a little bit more rounder. I don't mind there being some parts that are long and here's my reasoning for it actually. Um, mo this is mostly in Halo 5. Um, it actually changes from Halo Halo because of how the spawn system works. But let me... Um, let me give a particular reason. Um, so let's say you have a square here. It's probably not perfect, but 
All right, so you have a, let's put a little X here. All right, so when you have a square map, you have these deep corners, right? But when it's a square map, they're symmetrical to each other, the deep corners, right? So if I'm standing in the middle of the map, spawns are actually random, right? I can't force you to spawn in the corner when I'm in the middle. Now I can move closer to one side and it will probably engage the spawn, right? But if I move a little bit this way, then it could engage the spawn. And therefore, with a map that's a little bit more symmetrical, it's much easier to, fo uh, to spawn with Halo 5. The problem with elongated maps, which I do like long maps, like longest and stuff like that, I do like them. Just in Halo 5 spawn system, you're always going to spawn at one end versus the other. That's it. it, it it's without, you can't change it. So obviously this comes down to where are your walls and stuff like this. But as a general principle, I tend to have maps that are a little bit more from a top-down perspective. The corners of the map are somewhat symmetrical. Now this map I think will actually be wider. The map will actually be wider for me on this map than it is deep. I'm hoping that the wall, and I thought about this, uh, the wall, <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry, Gilly, I have uh, too many emojis. Uh, I could probably turn that off. <laughs> Love you, Gilly. <laughs> um, I'm hoping that the wall, the division of the wall is, will help alleviate the problem that an elongated map will have. Um, I'm also splitting the map so when, like, let's, like, I'm splitting elongation style, if, if that makes sense, for those who know that. So, like, for me, I'm splitting the map this way, not this way, because this is, like, this side or this side. But if I split it this way with a wall, you know, you have a lot more distance. So this person over here has a little bit more time to think because of the distance potentially. It's hard to say whether this is correct, but for this particular map, it's definitely gonna be slightly longer or slightly wider than it is deep. Um, but it won't be like absurdly one direction versus the other, you know, uh, I, because the I'm a designer who likes to design around spawns and like where, because I like mental Halo because skill-based Halo let's be honest, kind of sucks. It's like, okay, you five shot, whoop de doo You know, like, I like to kind of give the idea of making sure that spawns are safe so that when you spawn, you can think about where you want to go so that you can go to this spot, this spot, or that spot. So I tend to, even if I do a map long, elongated, I try to divide the map in a way that even though the spawns are always forced into, like, like either you're either this end or this end, that at least you'll have some options. Now, if I move this map to a 4v4 map, and I wanted, actually should have brought that up because when Shade says asked, could it be a 4v4 map? I have this edge here and this little prisoner cubby for spawns. If I was to turn this into a 4v4 map, I could expand on this building back here and make some play space back here. And this tower could come out and look into this play space or this ramp could come up back this way and look down into this play space. You know, something that will keep people from camping in the, this back potential play space. That was the first idea I had when Shot Aces asked me, hey, could you do this as a 4v4 map so that we could, so I could see how that you stress or how would you make something look pretty? Um, so we still might explore that idea. Um, I could also add a tunnel underneath here that goes to the building potentially you know like like or like not from here but maybe from here like that you can go a low path to the building and then come up inside of it so that this courtyard has at least a route access to that back area so those are some of the ideas that i might explore inside of forge um but i want to make it in sketchup first just so that i have some like rough ideas I hope that answered the question. It was probably a long tangent one. Uh, 
Um, okay. So this is that middle bridge. Oh, wrong one. Uh, let's zoom back. Oops. I need to. So this is that bridge. That's that building, that smaller tower. You, like I was talking about earlier, earlier, you can make that play space back there playable. And you might be thinking, like, um, like when I saw this photo, I was like, this photo doesn't need much work to make. And that's why I'm doing this photo. Um, I know on the previous episode, I talked about how to pull inspiration from a lot of different fo fo photos and um, to piece them together the way that you like. I'm doing something a little bit more simple in terms of like, I'm only sticking to one reference photo and I'm actually following the reference pretty close. Like uh, I'm, I'm doing almost this as it is, except for I will obviously, I mean, I, I talked about adding this path here that isn't here and, you know, maybe an under path and stuff like that. I'll do things that are not in this photo, but as a base to start with, I want to see what this looks like in 3D that I can maybe build upon or adjust or anything like that. But I wanted to bring that little part up. <coughs> All right. Uh, let's work on this other tower real quick. So I have, this is 16 feet, 16 feet. Um, I want to go, um, so, so 16, 16, 32, 40, uh, 48, I think. Yeah, 48. I think it's 48. Yeah, 16, 16, 32, yeah, 48, yeah. Uh, 48 so the the other tower was um, 64 I'm gonna do this one as 48 in the sketchup again these things are super adjustable and should be once you're in the actual engine itself whether it be forge unreal unity or your propriety whatever you know whatever you have uh, I don't know why I did that So, yes, do that, uh, the 4v4 idea. I mean, if enough people suggest it, then I will do it, yes. I, I, because I want this definitely to be interactive and whatever people want me to go towards, I'll definitely go towards. Um, so, yeah, if, if majority of people want to see a 4v4 map, I will try a 4v4 map in this game with good art um, and good gameplay, you know, and not try to... Uh, skip on either and the cool thing is is i'm as i'm looking at this layout if for some reason i can't do the japanese style art i could definitely switch it over to a human unsc aesthetic or a forerunner style art and easily be able to make it look amazing as a 4v4 map i want to avoid that at all cost i want to stick with an original art theme or original you know non halo art so um yeah so let's see all right so we got this building here we got the courtyard i want another door here uh, there was supposed to be a door over here let's go ahead and pull this out like this uh the pathway from low side into the large structure indifferent on player account but it looks more 2v2 scaling uh at the moment if it's for sure 100 percent at this current moment, 2v2 scaled. I would have to do some adjusting later, but I wanted to start with a basic 2v2 idea and then I will explore 4v4 ideas as I finish this. Um, I find it easier for me personally to add on to than take away stuff. So I, I'd rather, instead of making a 4v4 design and trying to take things away, I'd rather start with a 2v2 design and then build upon it. It's a different mindset, I guess. Um, I tend to work in a very additive type of way. I like this piece. Uh, what? Uh, maybe I should add this to do that, do this and that and the other. But um, low pathway. Yeah, we could. Def I could definitely explore the low pathway, even two v two, because um, this. Here, let's actually just kind of throw up. Uh, because what I could do is just have, as it comes through, just as a ramp up like this. You know, I could just do something like that, and then real simple. We'll worry about that when we get to it, but I want this particular sketchup to be a lot more roughly estimated what I want it to be in the end. Um, 
So courtyard, let's actually, do I wanna work on the interior of one of these? Uh, let's actually first add this door here. I've been doing all my, if for those that might be like, how, what, what are my doors? I've been doing them at 16 by 16, just for um, just simplicity. Uh, I think, you know, when you're doing your plans like this, be flex like keep things generic. And then once you're in, in the engine and actually trying to like um, design, you can then for sure adjust door height, door widths to like take care of certain ledge peak or uh, edge peaks and stuff like that. I would definitely like to see a Japanese themed 4v4 uh, Japanese theme. 4v4 Japanese would look so cool. But if it needs to be 2v2, that would be really cool too. Well, yeah, I mean, well, then for sure, we'll definitely um, give it a try and then we'll go from there. So I want this courtyard to have access to both towers. Um, so we're gonna give both towers a doorway. Um, oops. Uh, eight feet um, and a part of me thought about making this building a little bit more forward and adding another door here so you could come in and like use you can have two door entrances on the bottom floor here instead of having to force the person to come around like this that so an idea like that um, would be more appropriate for 4v4 in my opinion you know where you just need more space. And even, even though the space doesn't change, adding a door gives you proverbial play space or pathing. The more paths you have, that actually does add play space to your map. It also adds more line of sights and stuff like that. So I might explore an idea of a door here inside of a 4v4 concept. And I would do that by scooting the whole building forward into the courtyard a little bit more, more like this, you know, I would bring this a little bit more forward. And that's just so that when you're coming up this, or actually, if it was a 4v4 map, it would probably be safer to actually have the door on this wall here. So I would actually push this back and just put a door here that allowed you to come through here and just have it as a double door. But I would only do that as a 4v4 idea. Uh, I like to keep my paths limited so that you can use your thought to tell where people are going. At least that's the idea. Okay, um, let's work out here a little bit. Let's just for a random number, let's do 48 feet again. <coughs> now I'm not gonna make this look like terrain out here like it will be inside of the actual game, but it just gets the rough idea down. Oops. Oh. All right, so that's your outside courtyard. I mentioned something about a whale, uh, a well, I think. Or did I mention it? Maybe a statue or a well in the middle of the outside ridge. Okay, yep. That reminds me. This is why you always double check your notes. Uh, so we'll just do something like this just as like a little placeholder something that you can use as a way as lazy cover against the top but what we'll do is we'll ground it artistically speaking so that it doesn't feel like lazy cover it could even be a giant a giant tree what i could do is make this into like a giant tree of sorts you know like take two or three trees in forest, piece them together in a cool way so that it has a little bit more girth at the bottom so that you can kind of use this as a, um, as a tool to dance around against the top bridge, you know, something like that. So we'll actually change that in the notes because I just thought of that. So outside ridge, statue, well, or tree in the middle of the outside plaza ridge. So slash ridge. So, and if you come up with an idea as you're doing stuff, I, I always recommend to go back and actually update your notes too. Um, 
because as because when I was talking about notes in the previous episode, it was these notes are so that when you're not at your desk, you know, that you can actually still work on the map. So you want this to be up to date so that when you're at school or anything like that and you have a random idea, you can, you know, in between classes or if you're at work on a break or maybe it's slow or something, you can pull your phone out, check your notes and make sure that everything is always accurate and up to date. So I I recommend that if you come up with some key ideas, artistically or gameplay wise, always to go back to your notes and rewrite them. It's a I think that's very important. Um, <coughs> excuse me, I'm sorry. <coughs> I cannot get rid of this cough. Um, let's see. Um, so what I want to work, I had this, uh, I wrote, actually, did I write it down? I did write it down, right? Uh, try to use central building as a place cover, corner area, make sure. No, I didn't. See? There we go. Uh, make, use central building as a place to traverse and look into, make sure it's not absolute power position. I have a window from low roof that looks into buildings so you can see all corner oh here we go corner has maybe use big door as over to overpower bridge and center room okay yeah i did write it and so that since this is more lenient towards uh the center of the map i'm gonna add that over there I tend to try to be a little bit more organized with my thoughts <coughs> so we got a tree, we got a courtyard, we got some buildings. Let's work on this outside path. The one that I wanted to change that was a little bit different. And what I'm gonna do is pull this out 48 feet. I tend to use larger numbers. Like if you notice on my, my structural stuff, it's 16, 32 as the max, you know, in multiples of that. Uh, for outside parts, natural things, I tend to use bigger numbers um, just for scale reasons. Um, and I kind of want this courtyard to maybe come to the point like this. I want this door to kind of hit the middle here. So what I'll do is do that. But I, I kind of want to remind myself that this is uh, natural terrain. So we'll create a piece like this. We'll also do this and this. Uh, why did that not work? Uh, oh, it's triangle base. Uh, when you do crazy angles like that, um, that's just to remind myself that this is supposed to be natural. Nah, it's whatever. Gets the point across. I kind of wanted something else also that outside path that will lead up to this door and i want this door to be large large and in charge Oops. so this will have a roof here what's this here this is 16 feet I can see myself cutting eight feet off of this. You know, I want it to be above the door for sure. So let's just cut eight feet off of this. Because I wanted this idea of this thing looking through the building to the other side. So I want it to not feel totally awkward. And then to make this less awkward, I'll probably raise this another eight feet. And that should be pretty good there. And let's just make this eight feet also. Uh, this needs to be really thin also because if I want people to be up here, there should be not a safe reason to be up here. It should be always dangerous. So, like, I can be seen from the courtyard. Both I can see him from both sides of my left and right 100% of the time. I'll also be able to be seen from the bridge over here. So, the the it should be, relatively speaking not safe to be up here but at the same time there shouldn't be any sort of advantage to be in here other than seeing the bridge you know um 
but I'm not 100% certain about that. I'm, I'm this particular idea. I am less sure on than anything else. Um, this one does scare me. Um, and then what we'll do is push pull this another four feet. Uh, 16 feet. Because this something like this also comes back to like, um, you know, like this window idea of like maybe too many holes inside of this building is a bad thing. So that's something to keep in mind of. Now, the hard part is I want this doorway to be accessible from the court side. So this is where some creativity has to come in. And to be honest, this part of the design has me a little bit more stumped in terms of how to do it cleanly. So I have to sit here and look at this for a second because originally there was just gonna be another ramp kind of on the left side here and that was just going to be a separate path altogether that type of thing um so what i could do let's see let's experiment because this was a this was something i didn't have thought of this is something i didn't think of <laughs> until recently <laughs> oh my god i can't breathe um Oh man, Jesus. Uh, let's do another 32, oh, not inches. Because it's in inches, 32. Endpoint, come on. Oh. Like, this will be curving inside a forge, so. I'm scared to put, so here's one thing I'm scared of for sure. Like an easy idea would be to put a tower here, you know, a little, well, to put, put another little tower in this corner that you can go up in and then bridge out towards that. That would be the easy thing to do, for sure. You know, and I'll, I'll even throw this down here real quick, just so we can see what it looks like. You know, make sure that it's a bad idea. Just to make sure that it's a bad idea. Because sometimes you need to make sure your some of your ideas are actually ch horrible. You know, now if I was to do this, I would actually probably do it as like a lift tower, actually, like a like a bell tower kind of type thing. But let's try this out real quick. Cause this part I'm totally stumped on. Cause I think being on that door would be kind of cool. If this is a tower, what I could do is lower this enough. Cause one thing I don't want is the this, I don't want this top surface to be like oppressive through this whole like corner also the fact that it's in this corner only the bridge sees it and i just put them at the same height so that's kind of retarded granted you know this whole corner is completely void of being able to see it um and then i would do some sort of connection i don't know why i just did that i can do this be smart and, and then this would allow you to clamber up that. Like I could do something like that, but hmm, this is pretty interesting. Or if I, ah, uh, here's an idea actually. Actually, I just thought of something. I have this awning here, right? That's supposed to be used somewhat like maybe 
create just like a ledge that you could just jump up to, potentially. Let's, and it doesn't have to be really long. It could just be something like this. You know, push, pull, we'll do 16 feet. And then it can be up like this. So it gets people out of that corner more, but it does make it more safer because the bridge doesn't see it but it also doesn't see anything itself. Something like this is a little, like, obviously the easiest way to get up here would be from this corner here and just make this corner more powerful. But I don't wanna make the corner powerful. I want it, the corner over here to be a counter position to the powerful spot in the middle. Um, but I don't want it to be the powerful spot because then you're just forcing people to always spawn in the same spot over and over and over. So this could be like a little natural like terrain edge thing. You could jump from here to it, or you can jump from this platform up to here, and then you can jump up to the door because I would definitely, you know, since it's natural, I could play with this type, of, you know, it would be angled. I could do what I like to call the goat, actually. Let's, let's take a look. So I could have, uh on edge oops come on thank you so this could be just a big natural piece that just kind of juts out of the terrain right now this whole side over here is supposed to be an open cliff side and that whole side is, that whole side over there is a mountain wall but what I could do potentially is have this wall curve a little bit more than what it did in the photo. And the reason for that would be is to create maybe a piece of terrain that kind of, again, holds maybe a different edge. And to get people out of the corner, we just delete the corner altogether and make it where you, it's something that you have to jump to, kind of like this here. This is to make sure that the corner isn't somewhere somebody can camp, you know, by deleting the corner altogether. You can walk up. You know, you could walk up this, and this would have a lot more curve to it because it's natural terrain. So you, you would walk up curve to the right a little bit, jump onto this, and you would be able to access this bridge here. Now, granted, now this is actually quite an interesting photo, uh, idea. The point of this idea here is to poop on this, right? But if somebody is there already, you getting there from this low courtyard is a mute point, right? Like you can't actually get here without the bridge person seeing you already. That is an interesting dilemma. All right, examples, man. I appreciate uh, I exper uh, I appreciate you coming by. Um, that is an interesting dilemma. It might still be fine though. Like the whole point for it is to counter this, but if somebody's there, you can't get to this very easily. That's an interesting conundrum for sure. So let's take a look. So I have this tree here. I can use that. I probably would have to put something else in the courtyard here to block line of sights, or I could be really nerdy, actually, artistically speaking. I could, in theory, oh, where's a midpoint at? Come on, midpoint, All right, there we go. Well, this would, this would only look good in a different art, art style, but I could hang a sign. Now, uh, see that it's not low enough to actually block anything, hmm. That might be something that I have to like really adjust and kind of like 
mess with inside a forge, but it's something I would definitely have to mess with. So what I'm going to do is go to something else that I know more about first and then come back to that. Let's get rid of these roofs. Let's do some interior stuff. Okay, so I have a door here and a door here. This might actually not be big. 64 feet might actually not be big enough the more I think about it. So this might actually have to be quite a bit bigger if I want there to be a ramp system in here. But we'll take a look because 16, it has to go 32. Uh, uh, well, if I go around this way, okay, maybe, maybe, well, no, because I needed a, a platform, man. Yeah, this is definitely not large. This room here is for sure not large enough whatsoever. Not even close. But let's see how tight it is so that I... <coughs> so the ramp system is going to have to go the other way for sure. And what we can do is hide that for now. So... Um, Hmm, what a conundrum. I, this building needs to be a lot larger. Well, I know what I'm trying to do, so I'm not gonna worry about keeping it to scale. I just now know that it needs to be bigger than this. It has to be bigger than this by, by quite a bit, actually. Now, how long is this? Oops, that's 12 feet. Eh, it, it's, it just needs to be a little bit bigger. All right, and then we can create something like this. And from here, let's go up another eight feet. Maybe treat it more like a Maybe like a bell tower looking type thing. That's gonna change color on me no matter what. That's all right, it don't matter. We'll push pull that. Uh, your recent operations caused visible drop. Oh, okay, escape. All right, um, oh crap, I just forgot how to unhide. Uh, Edit, uh, unhide, last, okay. Basically, I gotta connect this door to this platform. And I, but I, I wanna do it in a way where this, this here can still see this corner and maybe potentially see the, I wanted this to also see the, the bridge that's going above it, but maybe it might actually be a good thing that it doesn't see that, to be honest. Because one of the things I, I was scared about is this being two way. So if this, and this actually might solve it. So if the, uh, this path goes over the window, it keeps people off of this corner and this platform. Well, no, because you won't be able to see up to that. So it only keeps people out of this corner over here, but you still can't get people out of this corner here. Hmm. Del interesting, interesting, interesting. This is what happens when you don't scale your middle building correctly. <laughs> I should have probably actually f designed the entire middle building first and then ex um, go out from it, but this should be fine. It's supposed to be rough anyway. So, we'll go like that. Pull this out like so, and I think what I want to do is create an endpoint there. We'll pull this up eight feet, and just for simplicity's sake, we'll connect these like so. 
cool. Hey, what happened to whoa? Um, sometimes when you push pull things, it it will it will um move the line itself also instead of creating. Oh, that I can actually wait. If that's flat, if that was flat. I might be able to actually pull this bridge back down low enough where the window could see it. Hey, oh. <coughs> hey, Alice, what's up? <coughs> so we'll leave this very rough for right now. This is what happens when you don't correctly scale your interior space. So. This is also when you don't make the walls thick enough for your space also. All right, so we got this bridge or this pa rock path kind of type thing here. We got a bridge, we got this bridge. So this side is for the most part down done. What I'll do Go ahead and find my midpoint, 16 feet, eight feet. Making dinner and decided to browse Twitch and saw you were streaming. <laughs> How's it going? <coughs> Besides this annoying cough that I have, it's actually been going pretty good actually. How about you? People are starting to slowly Go do the whole food thing that you're speaking about. <laughs> All right, so we got this door here. I actually want it to connect a path up to here also. So what we'll do is if I can not be blind is go to a midpoint. We'll just go eight feet again, like so. And we want that end point there. Uh, why is it not finding it? Endpoint. Okay, let's. Come on. Endpoint. Ah, it was much farther out than I expected. Good, I woke up at 6 30 p.m. Holy moly. Jeez, I thought you were an early morning person now. <laughs> that's a. That's a. That's. You almost pulled at me there. Uh, let's go down 16 feet. And we'll just go to this edge here. Connect those, push, pull, push, pull. Well, hell no, morning sucks ass. <laughs> I agree. I totally agree. Actually, I just thought of something actually. What if I just pull this whole thing upwards? Maybe I can get the window up high enough. That might be something worth exploring. Yeah, I should have, I don't know what I was thinking. I should have done the whole interior space first and then built out because this, it's more annoying to edit stuff than it is to make stuff. But I think it's the idea there. And it also lets me know that the scale of these buildings need to be a lot larger. Cool. Go back to the photo, make sure I didn't miss anything. So, yeah, looks good to me. <laughs> looks good for the, <laughs> looks pretty accurate for the most part. Except for got a few things I want to change. All right, so now, so let's see. Let's do this back piece of junk that is actually pretty simple to do. Let's pull this out 32 feet and create a line. This is going to be my fake back building. 
hello newcomers don't be afraid to say hi and ask questions oh the people people have been talking it's just everybody everybody's kind of got quiet recently we actually had quite a few people in here at one point um but they all had to go eat food cool so this will be that let's go up eight feet and this is just to signify my roof Push pull. <laughs> yeah, it surprisingly, uh, a lot of people um, tend to stay in here and just listen and just kind of do other stuff while listening. Uh, first episode, I averaged 14 viewers. Uh, I peaked, I saw it hit 16 earlier today already. So I, I, I get a good amount of. <laughs> oh, I, you know I love you, Alice. Don't worry. You, you, you are a okay. <laughs> Oops, that moved that wall. Well, let me just add this piece back in so that I don't. But yeah, it. Yeah, I mean I. I've been getting decent viewership for this. So the first episode was a lot more information heavy. I'm sure right now. I'll try, but I'll try to get, you're all right, man. <laughs> you're, you're contributing by, by being here. This almost looks like an alternate longshore. A longshore. A longshore has that middle building though that's actually quite large and it has a side path right so basically i guess if this is long short, i'm shrinking down the middle building and blowing the wall out right is that what you're saying like there's that that little path that you come down that looks out to the dock side so it's blowing that wall out and getting rid of the far right tunnel Okay, I I can see that a little bit actually. I can, I can see that a little bit. I, that that kind of makes me not want to do this anymore. <laughs> oh man, dang! You've might have ruined this map for me. <laughs> It'll look a lot different. It'll look a lot nicer than Long Shore. <laughs> no, you're good. I mean, well, here's the thing. If it looks like Longshore, is there anything in that map that I'd like that I could maybe implement into the map? That, And that's another thing. If you notice, and that brings me to a good point about, um, brings, a, <laughs> brings me to a good um, point about that flexibility if you find if somebody tells you that hey it reminds me of this or something like that um like for example longshore like what what is something that longshore did that i like and what can i pull from that now granted you know we have this outside path and they had a bunch of crates over there but it had no way to approach the building from the left side it just had the big building and then it went out to the to the catwalk and then there was a wall there and then there was a court there was a big middle area there there was a building on this end and that actually kind of goes back to what i was saying earlier about if i was going to move this to a 4v4 map i would actually explore with play space back here and i could see some of the ideas that longshore had actually make its way into this game into this and i'll do this as a quick example basically what i could do theoretically is delete this and have that as this corner as its own standalone piece and i could explore also explore with something on this end as like a courtyard type thing so saying longshore actually might solve some ideas for the 4v4 aspect of this map so what i'll go back to the notes um and we'll add that uh someone said it looks like long shore could you maybe use that 
underscore potential uh, for uh, use that for uh, use that for ideas or uh, I don't care about English. I don't care if potential ideas for v4. And uh, back on episode one, uh, I should have mentioned it because that was all about um, getting something started. You know, it was what, an hour and a half, just me just pounding out a lot of information. Um, take anything said as, as constructive, even if it's not. Like, try to always look at things in a constructive manner. Like, okay, I don't like for me personally, I don't like Longshore, but like there were obviously little parts. Oh, I, what am I thinking of? Longshore. Oh, what map? Am, what is the It was a Halo 3 map. Wait, is Longshore the Zanzibar map or is it? No. You know what? This is what the internet is for. Let's do some interwebs. I'm thinking of a different map. Longshore, Halo 3. Because that's what I was thinking. No, I'm, I'm right. Okay. Okay. I was thinking of the right map. Whew. Oh, I was going to say, if I could not get this correct, uh, that would be bad. No, I'm, I was thinking of the correct map. This was the map I was thinking of. Okay. All right. Yep. Okay, I was correct then. I was correct. Woo! Actually, looking at this dock. No, because this is going to be mostly terrain. So what if I was to build something over here, I could do some awning type stuff. But it would get rid of the big door. And the big door looks is going to look really cool. So I would have... If I wanted to incorporate this like tiered system, which could solve how I get to the uh, upper part of the tower. It could solve that by exploring something along this idea here. Um, that is interesting. I totally forgot that, I totally forgot that, that was two floors. Because when you said Longshore, I started thinking about the, uh, the back half, of this half of the map, this piece here and how I can implement that as part of the 4v4 solution. That's what I started thinking of. I totally forgot about the, the two layered docks. Nonetheless, <laughs> you're right, Shade says. I was like, wait, am I wrong? I could be wrong about a Halo related thing. <laughs> I wouldn't put it past me. Uh, let's see. Um, let's pull that out. And what I kind of want is to go ahead and put my wall, my exterior wall in so I know, what in the world? You know, like a part of me actually kind of wants to go to a 4v4 map just to solve this piece here. Because I'm trying, as a 2v2 map, one thing that I like to avoid in 2v2 maps because you can lose people really quickly is walls. So like I have the central wall right here, right? That is the main division of the map to keep people from seeing each other. But in terms of the corners themselves, right? In terms of the cor each corner of the map, you'll actually see that all three of the four corners are very open. You can't hide in the corners. The only corner you can hide in is here. And that's fine. It's, you know, having some of these are bad, but the more corners that you put on the map that you can hide in, it makes it really difficult for players to find each other consistently. Um, it kind of slows down the flow and the pace of the match. So if I was to move to 4v4 though, we have more players and actually it's not as hard to find people. So therefore adding more walls and corners is not a bad idea. So if I was actually to do this as a 4v4 map, this outside ridge here, I could do as like a, a cave, like just a tunnel cave that you can go into and there would be a little outlet right there at the top. 
And that cave can be completely se like segmented from the rest of the map. It can be its own thing, right? So, um, let's go to the notes. Again, anytime you come up with an idea, always add it to your notes. Um, bridge that goes to door could be a cave if 4v4 map. So, again, that's good note to have because then I could block this off. It would, be, it would just be infinitely easier. Um, but for now, let's keep it as a 2v2 map still. Um, I'm not sure I want this to be something. Oh, shoot, that's why. Excuse me. Um, so what I'm going to do is just pull this up. That, and there we go. And then what I will do is pull one of these, like so. All right, there's my first outside edge. Except for... You know, I wouldn't have this cornerback side just so that I don't freak myself out. Let's see. All right, so this little jump along, got a wall there. Technically speaking, this is also a wall here. And we won't worry about keeping this pretty anymore. <laughs> because of the middle building. So, okay. So the idea f with this, this is the f final, I guess, layout of the 2v2 ideas that I'm having. The, or not the final layout, this is the basic idea that I have for that particular top down, except for I would have to add Where's the middle point? Probably right here. So let's 16. And we'll go 32. We'll make it really long. That's what she said. Seth, this is going on YouTube. Stop doing that. <laughs> uh, 16 feet. Actually, let's go 32 feet. So this, no, let's go back. Another 16 feet. All right. So that's that little prisoner cubby idea where you can spawn there and potentially go somewhere. And as a 2v2 map, this would heavily favor the middle building a lot. Because there, there is no true play space on this corner. Like you can come up this ridge here, jump to the door, and then jump to this like um, back hallway platform thingy. Uh, actually, another thing I wanted to do was is look into this type of idea. So open up this corner a little bit more. So you can actually come into this building and then they'd be on this mid floor and actually get to this back platform so that you could come around and maybe look down this line of sight right here, like this here, maybe catch people trying to go up to this door. So with something like this, in a 2v2 map with very little walls, um, players are going to gravitate towards the walls. That's always, that's like, that's natural. That's gonna be like a natural behavior that happens. So if I was to do this as a 2v2 design, I would really have to pay attention to the interior design space here a lot. Um, you know, making sure that it's interesting, I guess, and I guess fun would be another word because this is where everybody wants to gravitate. It has access to the bridge, which 
controls both courtyards, right? Um, but this is also the main way you get here. You can come there from this building here, and a part of me feels like if, even if I was to do this as a 2v2, I, I would feel like I would want to connect the prisoner tunnel to this, this room here. Like this, I feel like this particular space, I want to find a way to bring this a little bit more into the map. It's at the corner, so it could be a corner camper, but I don't think camping in this corner would be all that beneficial, but it could be. Definitely could be. So this is the this is everything that we talked about last episode when we were going through everything and coming up with this basic idea. That's pretty much this. Uh, just a little bit more fleshed out with some, with, like where the height's at and stuff like that. Um, now, originally without the door, let's explore the no door um, idea that I had, which was to have this connect you would do this, but this would allow you to go all the way to the back corner. And this was all the way up. So there would be no hole here. And a part of me thinks, like, because I feel like this room is getting a lot of traffic, just this subtle change right here would bring a lot more traffic to this corner here. And I don't think this necessarily this corner is that powerful, to be honest. Um, so putting people over there would not necessarily be a bad thing. You know, obviously something would go in the courtyard to keep the bridge from pounding down on the courtyard a lot too. So we could say, uh, go back to notes. Uh, maybe statue of an outside plaza ridge. Uh, look into... Actually, <laughs> it's a Japanese map, right? Let's actually, let's, let's do something here real quick. Just for fun, let's pull up a uh, Japanese port, port yards. Go back to episode one and see what we can see. There we go. So, like, so court, these little Japanese courtyards tend to always have like a bunch of stuff in it. Sometimes water, like fish ponds, trees, something. Let's see, this would be more accurate, but I wonder if we could combine something like this here, like a, but move the tree towards the center, and combine that with something like this, where there's some water, flowing around tree in the middle as like a little zen garden type of thing so we would have let's say we'll put just a itty bitty kind of tree thing here we'll kind of do the same thing we did before you know just as as something to use against the bridge also it kind of weakens the bridge a little bit That could be interesting. I actually kind of like the that idea. Um, so, uh, tree slash water garden in upper court yard. And this is one of those things where like some artistic ideas actually uh, can actually influence your um, your gameplay in a positive way because like, you know, when you have something like this bridge in the middle, it's always going to be a factor. It's There's always going to be people up there and you always got to think of how can I weaken this. And the more I think about this cave idea, even inside of a 2v2, I'm actually probably not totally opposed to a cave idea over here because like, it's not like it's 
doing anything powerful. Like it's secluded, it's by itself. It doesn't see anything. If somebody's camping in there, it's not like it's hard to pu push them out. Or it, it shouldn't be hard to push them out. So, but what it, but what it would be as a cave is you can go in there and recuperate from this here. Kind of. So uh, if somebody's on this bridge, where am I spawning is always like the question. I'm, I'm going to spawn either this low courtyard by the awning, you know, somewhere in this area over here. You know, somewhere over here or spawning up here when they're on the bridge. And I have access to the high ledge and this underside. Like if I spawn here, I can come to the underside. So maybe the bridge at this current point is not too much of a problem. Probably not. Maybe it is. Who knows? I definitely... Like the thing with this door or this thing here, I like the idea of standing on it. But other than that, like, is it both? Is it this and this? Or is it maybe this instead, actually? Because this, this spot's always been a pain already. <laughs> maybe it's that. It could be that. Like you come up the pit ridge, you have to jump to the the thing here, right? You have to go here no matter what. And if you want to get up here, you just jump simply backwards. I definitely you know, as as earlier I said, there could be a route through bottom mid that goes all the way to this building over here. There might be a way to create that tunnel system in a 2v2 setting that doesn't pull people so far away and create too much additional play space. Because I would like to keep the footpath, like I would like to keep the footprint of this map about this size if I'm going to stick to 2v2. So I don't want to go any deeper, but what I would like is maybe to get some more utilization over in this side of the map. What I could do is explore with that. So let's hide here real quick. Like if I created a tunnel, flip the thing upside down. That always hurts my head every time I do that. All right, so you come in through here. Is that the bottom of the map? Okay. So let's just add a little path here real quick. 16 feet. That didn't look like 16 feet to me. 16 feet, it is, okay. Eight feet. No, no, eight feet, that, oh, I'm on the wrong axis. Center, all right, blue, no, give me the blue, 16 feet, there we go, 18, eight feet, eight feet, all right, cool. All right, cool. And now this kind of lines up with what I have already, but I, I would probably explore with the idea of this being a lot wider. So let's go 16 feet that way and 16 feet that way. God, I hate the idea of tunneling underneath the map, like, like generically speaking. Especially, well, I hate the idea of j tunneling underneath a map in a 2v2 map. Let me let me phrase that a little bit better. Because, like, it, 
it's easy it could be easy to kind of hide down there but it's at the bottom of the map like you, you shouldn't and it my fear for these type of things usually stems from the fact that I just like my maps to be kind of just action pack. You know, they're, they're, okay. Oh, okay. Uh, it must be that piece. Oh, yeah. Okay, whatever. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I, I get it. I get it now. I, I know what it's saying now. Um, are we still doing the statue idea? <laughs> uh, because it's Halo, it's probably going to be a tree. Um, probably a tree. It will fit the Japanese theme a little bit more. Like I could try and do like a cherry blossom or a white tree of sorts that kind of fits like the whole Zen Japanese theme. But who knows? Maybe I could find a way to do something that actually looks halfway decent uh unhide all and if so can it be to <laughs> can it be to fairy if this was if 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 this maybe the next series what i'll do is i'll do it do it do it with unreal engine instead and then we'll do it to fairy uh to fairy statue <laughs> All right, so we got a little tunnel. What I want this thing to do is connect to this somehow. You know, a part of me, if it's a 2v2 map, a part of me wants to be somewhat lazy and just do it as a lift because I don't want some complicated mess of ramps that people can hide on. I just, it would be nice for it to be just a straight tunnel you get to the lift and then you're up in the cubby, which is probably what I'll do actually here. Um, lifts are still also used in default Halo kind of stuff. So I'm okay with lifts. Yeah, if this wasn't, if this wasn't um, uh, Halo Forge, uh, if season, because I did see, I'm doing season one and as Forge, for Halo, I can't actually make custom assets for Forge, but I can if we go and do Unreal Engine next time. Yes. Fairy just always be winning. This to fairy to fairy to fairy. It's probably, to be honest, it's the only reason why I continue to play Jazz Guy is just so that I don't, I'm not sitting on cards that I'm not playing. Oops, I don't want to hide it. I want to erase it. All right, so this tunnel goes to the back. It hits a lift, and you appear at the top of it. All right, so let's do push pull of sixteen. Actually, let's hide that. Ah, well, for simplicity's sake, so I don't have to do a lot of stuff. Let's do that. And let's do a push pull of 16 feet. Push pull. Yeah, I don't care. Oh, oh there's a little tunnel lift this will keep people from camping in a particular u-shaped piece or a ramp that is easy to hide on where with something like this tunnel into a lift it's just a straight line so if somebody's camping down there it's just really easy for me to come right here see them they lift up i can actually now come up this ramp here and kind of continue the fight so this is not actually that problematic, actually, in my opinion. This is actually a fairly, a fairly okay solution. Um, now, if I move, as I've said many times already, if I move this to a 4v4 map, we can explore with like expanding this building and turn it into like something cool. Um, but at the moment, 
not necessary. Cool. So the lift comes up. You have a little tunnel now. You go through. You can lift up in the corner. Now, I'm not that. I keep not being that scared of this tunnel or this back corner because it's so open and it's slanted angles and stuff. So I'm like, I'm half tempted to put an outside ramp up to it, that, like just so that you can get up to it. I'm, I'm exploring that idea right now in my head. Uh, let's go back 16 feet this way so I have some space. Because usually these like Japanese, actually let's let's pull, pull up some art here real quick. These um, Japanese buildings. So let me find one. So the little overhang is the part I'm talking about on that upper part. Now there's one particular building that I saw that I really liked that had an exterior ramp that was very inspiring. Because again, I don't want ramps behind walls because you can just hide in them for 2v2s. So it was an exterior ramp. Um, but basically, they would have it, it had the angle part, and then it had like a little um, just overhang again, a thin overhang like that, and the ramp connected underneath it up to a hole, and then you would able to just walk onto it. It was real interesting. Um, very, very interesting. So might be worth exploring that idea of a ramp. So what I'm going to do for uh, simplicity's sake, you know, we can get into exact prettiness uh, later. Oh, hold on. Something I did in After Hours that I really like was scaffoldings. And technically, I've definitely seen like these old style scaffoldings, scaffoldings in the Japanese theme. There's just a couple wood planks, wood planks, some junk underneath it. Um, basically, it would just be getting rid of metal and just only using wood, right? Um, and they're like construction planks. So like when something's under construction, they use these, right? And I, I know I've seen something like that before. Let me see if um, Japanese scaffolding. Let's say old. Let's see, something, something like this, but not as busy. There was. Let's type in wood. That's pretty cool. That's too much detail for Forge, that's for sure. Um, we'll find artistic, like exact art ideas, but the idea is that I could create this little ramp just to a platform, and then from the platform you trump up to the roof. That's the, that's the point of me saying everything that I have just said. Is, it's just simply to create a little visual platform that you can just walk up on and then clamber up to the roof. Um, one thing I like about it is it brings a little bit more traffic to this, but it's not that powerful because one, it's in the open, and two, it puts when you go up this ramp, you're putting your back to the rest of the map. So even though I'm bringing more traffic and attention to this, getting to the spot from this courtyard is still, relatively speaking, a dangerous aspect because you have to put your back to the map. You also have to clamber. Um, so I'm actually okay with this idea here. I'm actually pretty okay with this idea. <coughs> uh, we're coming up on two hours. I don't want it. I didn't want really these to last longer than that. So I think this might be actually a pretty good spot to stop. Um, let me just look over this a little bit more. And 
you know, think about some stuff. You know, I have the mountain wall. I have the building here. You know, there'll be an, another set of awning above it. I wanted this one in the back to be a little bit more of a, a, faca a, fa a facade or a facade or however everybody wants to pronounce it of a building. And basically the building is just the wall. It's all it is. You don't actually go in it. You, um, but I kind of am liking this idea. <laughs> I kind of like what I got going on here. One thing I'm kind of iffy on is this, how well, well, I just thought of a solution, how well this bridge sees this lower part. So, you know, a part of it is like, I could create another little awning kind of thing here to kind of overhang, to keep this ramp safe. These are type of little details that we'll try and figure out later. Um, so with that being said, I would guess I'm going to start and do my outro. So I want to say thank you to all the people who showed up in chat. Uh, it was amazing today. I had a lot of conversations, a lot of questions. Um, if we continue to get this type of, you know, interaction and growth, it will have a lot of fun. Um, today's episode, obviously, is, if you're watching this, was more about executing on our ideas from the previous episode. And I'm going to try and keep these episodes in that every other format. You know, we'll have an episode where it's just tons and tons of information. And then we'll move into the second episode utilizing that information. So that's my goal at the moment. Things are always subject to change when you're running a scriptless, you know, design series where you're just speaking off the top of your mind. So uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, thank you so much for sticking around this long. Uh, for those that uh, have made it this far, I hope you would subscribe if you enjoyed it. And uh, we will see you next week.